All right, it looks like it's 30 minutes after the hour. And so I, this is Tim and I figure we can get started because we're all looking forward to this part of it. Um, welcome to the second session of DNS Op. Um, Tim, Benno and Suzanne, you both heard them on the audio for a few minutes ago. Um, Paul's taking minutes again. The Jabber Room is tied into Meet Echo, which is actually very nice in many ways. Um, the Note Well, for you folks that that haven't seen it yet by this time of the week, um, please read it. Um, or if you have any questions, just ask one of the chairs or ADs. Um, so yeah, they're gonna shift the order around a little bit. Um, and we can discuss this if people have any objections to it or anything like that, or do a little new business first. Um, Schumann wants a few minutes to talk about this, uh, his new draft. Um, and I know that sort of raised some questions this afternoon. So if folks have any sort of bashing to do on that, please speak up, speak up now. Um, then what we're gonna do is um, we've got a liaison reply to the ISO statement on private use TLDs. Suzanne's gonna present that and some proposed next steps. Um, they'll do those sort of in a combined fashion. Um, <coughs> And then we'll break down and talk about some of the prioritization of the working group activities, including a discussion um, as to what's going on as that. So, um, so saying that we can, um, with, no, with nothing to say, um, we'll just jump in this um, Schumann. Um, Shimon, you can just unmute yourself and stick yourself on video. You don't have to wait. Okay. Was that to me, uh, Paul? Thanks. Okay. So um, uh, I know there's some concern about taking time away from the work prioritization discussion, so I'm going to be very quick. Uh, I'm discussing a new draft that describes an enhancement to the uh, so-called uh, Black Lies Authenticated Denial of Existence Mechanism. I'm using the term that's widely known to describe this method, but I want to focus today on the technical content of the draft. Folks can propose other names afterwards, uh, so please, let's not do that right now, please. And uh, next slide, please. Uh, let me start by uh, quickly describing the mechanism for those who aren't aware of it. It's documented in an expired internet draft from 2016, and as far as I'm aware, has never been proposed uh, to be published as an RFC in any category. However, it is becoming widely deployed amongst the online signers. There are now three major commercial DNS vendors that use it. Use it. Cloudflare, of course, the originator, NS1, and more recently, Amazon Route 53. And what it does is effectively eliminate the concept of uh, NX domain, which, as it turns out, has some implications. Next slide, please. Uh, so for a name that doesn't exist, which would normally elicit an NX domain response, it pretends that it does exist, but doesn't have any data associated with the type you queried for. Uh, that's to say it returns a no data response. So status code, no error with an empty answer section. And the rationale is twofold. You have more compact answers. A uh, signed no data requires just one an NSEC record and its corresponding RR SIG. And uh, better performance, you just have to do one online signing operation for the NSEC signature. And by contrast, uh, a, a typical NX domain response requires up to two NSEC records. And if you use NSEC3, up to three NSEC3 records and their associated signatures. So that's larger responses and more computation to produce those responses. Next slide, please. Uh, so what operational implications does this scheme have? For normal end user applications, uh, probably nothing. The effect of a no data response is treated identically to an NX domain in almost all cases. However, there are a variety of diagnostic tools, traffic characterization tools, et cetera, 
that may need changes to effectively deal with this um, uh, rather strange protocol. Obviously, uh, the uh, first example that uh, comes to mind is things that plot our code distribution of DNS traffic. Many people do that, so they'll see almost everything is no error from these signers since our code tree just doesn't exist here. And to give another example from my day job, we have DNS record provisioning tools that need to precisely determine NX domain. They have uh, critical safety features that prevent you from, say, uh, creating a zone cut or installing a DNAME at a name that does exist to prevent accidentally occluding everything at or below that name. And lack of this safety feature has actually caused production DNS outages for us, and we need this stuff to work. So arguably, the R code should not be used for these types of checks because, as we all know, it's unauthenticated and could be spoofed. But then what we need to do is to infer non-existence by looking deeper into the payload of the DNS response, specifically at the signed NSEC records, and figure out whether uh, this is sufficient or not to detect um, non-existence. So next slide, please. And the answer is almost. Here's what an NX domain response looks like from this protocol. So I'm querying a name that I know not to exist, nxd.blah, et cetera. And you can see the response code is no error, not NX domain. So how might we infer that this name actually doesn't exist? Well, the obvious way is to look at the type bitmap in the NSEC uh, record and see if it has any data record types associated with it. And we can see here that it only has the NSEC metadata, RRC and NSEC. But is that good enough? Next slide, please. Uh, not really, because if we query an empty non-terminal name, which positively does exist, as in this example, we get an identical response. The, uh, we get exactly the same type bitmap, as you can see at the bottom right. Next slide, please. Uh, so there's no way to distinguish NX domain from MT non-terminals in the spec as originally written. Our proposal then is that these implementations and only these implementations add a new synthetic RR type to the NSEC type bitmap to signal the presence of an ENT. And that will immediately allow you to uh, you know, precisely differentiate NX domain. Uh, from uh, this case of non-NX domain. So this is deployed in the field already by one commercial DNS vendor. And I'd like to acknowledge Jan Chalak, who I work with to make that happen. And I'm also speaking with a, a second vendor about implementing this. Next slide, please. And to make it more concrete, here's a re real example of this enhancement in action. I query the uh, MT non-terminal that I have here cleverly named ent1.sftcsd.net. And as you can see, we have this additional synthetic RR type in the type bitmap. Currently, we're using a number from the private use RR type range. Uh, we could and probably should ask for an official allocation from IANA. Uh, next slide, please. And if you're interested, I have some uh, simple sample code here to infer NX domain from the BL type bitmap. And uh, next. And lastly, what should we do next? So whether the ITF DNS up crowd likes it or not, the BL mechanism is deployed in the field today and potentially will be widely used because, as I mentioned, there are three big DNS vendors doing it. So it seems to me that it deserves to have a stable uh, published reference, not just an expired ID. We did inquire with um, the originator maybe a year or two about their uh, draft and didn't hear back. The ENT enhancement that I just described is also deployed in the field and should have a published reference for that same reason. Uh, now, due to the fact that this protocol contorts the semantics of NX domain, uh, egregiously, one might say, I suspect that the DNS uh, crowd will not bless this approach, but maybe I'm going to be surprised. So I was thinking informational RFCs via the independent stream could be the most fruitful course of action to pursue. And we could even combine the original prot protocol description into my new draft, and then we just have one document to publish. So what else? We could let this draft expire as well and call it a day. And uh, with that, I will stop.
Go ahead, Victor. Support uh, either informational or standard track. This looks like a good idea. Okay. Okay, those are, those are two radically different <laughs> things though, right? But okay, thanks, Victor. <laughs> yep, Peter. Hello, I know I argued against bullet point two earlier today on the list, but then I found myself arguing for bullet point one on the chat just now. So I guess I stand behind bullet point four a document that describes all of, the, all of these things that are happening because it is important for any developer to know that these are happening. And I have found as a resolver vendor that it is important to understand what is happening in the Black Lives area so we don't pollute our NSEC aggressive cache with those. So I like four, I have no, uh, no opinion on point three because process is unclear to me. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks, Peter. So I think I, I agree generally. I mean, one of the problems I've had is uh, when I talk to savvy DNS engineers in my company, they're uh, often surprised by this behavior of, uh, you know, the vendors that do these tricks. And then I have to explain what it is. And then uh, I have no, like, stable documentation for uh, to point them to, right, to even describe what's going on. Yeah, there's a Cloudflare blog post from years ago that isn't quite good, but doesn't describe exactly what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's the additional confusion that when you query without uh, the DNS like OK bit, that Cloudflare does actually return an X domain. So many things about it are confusing. So I do agree that some stable reference would be very good to have. OK, great. Thank, Thank you. you, Peter. Joe. Uh, we, uh, I can't, we, hear, I you can't hear you, Joe. Oh, no? Oh, now I can. Oh, now I can. Oh, good. Okay, good. Um, no idea why that is. Anyway, um, I don't think it's actually very important whether we think this is a good idea. I think it's far more important that it's being used and it's confusing. Um, and I think a document is good. I think the working group should take this on, although I, I hesitate to say that because I know the working group's already got a lot of documents that it's struggling to make progress on. But um, I do agree that it should be published just because it's being used. It's deployed in the wild and it's nice to have a reference when people are confused. Okay, thank you, Joe. Paul. Uh, I don't know if Paul is talking because I can't hear him. Hello, hello. Uh, there we hello, go. Hello, yes. Sorry about that. Um, I agree with the, the previous two speakers that we should do this. We should do this in a working group. Um, since it's mostly documenting existing practice, it shouldn't be too slow to go through the working group because we're really just writing what's already there. Um, okay. I would request that we not call it Black Lives and come up with a different name. Sure. sure. Uh, uh, so we are going to do that. And I think, uh, uh, Joe, you're going to come up with an alternative name for me. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> But we'll work on that. Okay, so I'm going to relay something that was just uh, sent to me. Um, and it looks like Cloudflare is on board with uh, renaming and helping to publish. So that's, that's good. Uh, we're closing the queue. Yeah. Donald? just wanted to say that uh, as the author of the Anna Considerations RFC, uh, since this needs special handling, uh, it requires the standards action to assign an RR type for this purpose. It cannot be handled as an unknown RR, I don't think. Maybe, I'm, my opinion. OK, uh, thank you, Donald. We'll have to figure that out, I guess. Brian. Joe, are you in queue again? Or no? Brian. Brian, uh, sorry. I, I guess when I was reading the, uh, the draft, it wasn't clear to me, and then going back and looking at some of the related items, uh, whether 
this is also being done by these providers for NSEC 3, or if it's only NSEC. Uh, I think NSEC 3 has a slightly different uh, behavior in terms of how it treats ENTs, and that was what originally caused me to post the list. Uh, right, I, yeah. Call it. So, uh, so my understanding is that this mechanism only use NSEC. Uh, NSEC okay. with epsilon functions. NSEC3 is more complicated. It requires more records, so they chose not to do that. Okay. Uh, okay. Shane. That's all I have. Yeah. Yeah. I can just address that uh, last point very quickly. Um, there's no benefit for using NSEC3. Uh, this already hides, this already prevents the zone enumeration. Um, so there's no real, there'd be no reason to apply NSEC3. Uh, um, I just wanted to push back against the idea that we're just going to document an existing protocol or some part of DNS. Um, if we're going to adopt this as a working group item, then it needs to be a proper working group item and we should be allowed to change it or improve it. I don't expect many changes because it is in production. It does seem to work. Uh, we use it at NS1, as you, as you pointed out. Um, but I don't want to end up with something like um, EDNS client subnet where we're sort of like, uh, well, we'll just adopt what it is and we'll fix it up later in another version, which will never happen. So that's, uh, that's my feeling about that. Okay, thanks, Shane. All right, thank you, folks. Yeah, thank you, Shimon. Uh, let me move the window around. And I guess I'm next. Right. Everybody's favorite. Um, just to set the stage, um, this is this is going to be a, a very process-oriented update on the situation that we have around this draft. Um, the chairs have because it's a process-heavy kind of kind of activity. The chairs do have a specific role. And we've been working with our area directors and with Wes as a member of the IAB to keep the process on track. Um, but the working group will have to decide what we'll do with the situation we have. So I'm going to go through the, the process pieces first and list where we are with, with the various options for how to proceed because no decisions have been made and no decision can be made without the working group um, as far as what to do with the information we have. Um, the editors of the private use TLD document have some comments to make on how we might proceed, and uh, we wanted the chairs wanted to see how people feel about where we are. But this is largely a process and sort of informational update, and we will proceed. We will continue to discuss the implications. Next slide, please. Very brief history: um, the private use TLD draft introduced late in 20, 2019, adopted middle of last year in the midst of a, a, in the timeless COVID time. Um, the basic idea we had discussed before, I believe, in DNSOP, to acknowledge the use of, quote, private TLDs, which is a terrible term, as, you know, m most of us, most of us are familiar, um, outside of the public DNS. And the idea was to minimize damage of, of these uses of the public DNS outside of the public DNS by indicating strings that seem safe to use for this kind of purpose. The draft proposes to add around 40 of user assigned alpha 2 codes to the special use names registry. And that's where the process comes in because ISO 3166 is maintained by another standards development organization beside ISO TC46 and DNS out sought guidance on whether the user assigned list was stable and otherwise suitable for this use. The IAB administers liaison relationships on behalf of the IETF, including to ISO TC46. And the IAB composed an appropriate question in a liaison request and the liaison manager was asked to follow up. And there's a reference here for the where that, that's online. The liaison manager has offered written advice to the working group, including a, an assessment of why we should not expect a formal response and why we shouldn't use the proposed strings as private TLDs. Now, this is a communication to the chairs. We get to decide what we make of it. Next, please. 
again, no decision has been made on how to proceed, but and, and we do have to consider where we are at the moment. Unknown, what alternatives we might have to accepting the advice. Um, John Clemson was liaison manager that handled the communication. We forwarded his letter to the mailing list. Um, in particular, the reason given in his analysis for why there isn't more of an answer from ISO TC46 sounds structural, not circumstantial or procedural. Um, I want to emphasize at this point that this kind of communication is well within the prerogatives of any standards development organization regarding a standard they maintain, um, including, as John described, the IETF itself. Just for example, the IETF has no way to answer such a question besides publishing a new RFC. Um, and also, realistically, it's very difficult to assure anyone that anything in the digital world is guaranteed to be stable for 50 or 100 years. Next, please. So the implications of the advice we've gotten, if we take it at face value, as unlikely as it might be to change, we can't depend on these strings to remain user assigned forever. The lack of a clear answer itself promotes uncertainty, particularly if we're talking about a standard track RFC and IANA actions. Reserving the strings in the special use names registry may be unproductive for the ISO IETF relationship, which does affect more than DNSOP. At face value, this implies we should look elsewhere for strings to reserve for the private TLD purpose. Next, please. So we have options. Um, possible ways forward for the draft. We can proceed with it as currently written. We can rewrite it in a couple of different ways to reserve different strings formally in the special use names registry or to provide procedural advice to people with this engineering problem of strings to use in a private DNS context, but not recommending specific strings. Um, we can abandon the draft and figure we'll revive it if and when acceptable strings can be agreed on or the question can be safely avoided. There's a lot of ways to, to, to approach that. Um, the working group could ask the chairs to come up with a way to get further advice, which would almost certainly, which would necessarily involve our area directors or the IAB or both. Um, your option here, we're, we're looking for if other pe if people see additional options that they feel strongly about, we would like to hear that. Um, but we also wanted to make sure that the current editors of the document had a few minutes to make their suggestion on how we might want to move forward. So I think Joe Abley is next as one of the editors of, of the document. So I'll let Joe to take it away. Take it away. Thanks, Suzanne. Can you hear me? Just checking. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah, good. All right. So um, we threw these slides together very quickly earlier today without having the benefit of looking at your slides, Suzanne, that you just repeated, so it's just presented. So I'm going to suggest, in the interest of not repeating anything, the original slides are all there in the materials. People can see them. But can we just skip to the very last slide, which has moving on in the top? That'll save some time. I don't want to repeat all the stuff that Suzanne just said. So. This is what we came up with. The, the authors, the editors of this draft, this is the working group's draft, it's not our draft. The editors of this, of this draft already had different possible futures in mind. And I think we mentioned on the mailing list that like we didn't all agree with each other about the best way. We were kind of listening to guidance. Um, and what we discovered on the path to that is that this is a tangled mess of policy and standards bodies and governments. <laughs> it's just a bit of a nightmare. And it's probably fair to say it's more of a nightmare than we anticipated when we started doing what we thought was a very sensible thing. So what we suggest is that there's some good work in this document. There's some useful stuff to write down. We know that there are some people using these particular two character code points in private networks. So what we suggest is that we recognize that the existing, recognize the current state of the advice. We don't recommend anything. We don't put anything in any IANA registry. We don't reserve any of these names. We don't promote any kind of best current practice or even worse current practice. What we do instead is we describe why people have decided, some people have decided to do this, document the potential future pitfalls, the fact we cannot predict the future, these things are not guaranteed to be stable, and we just empower people to make their own decisions. So we think this is a reasonable way to avoid bogging ourselves down and possibly you know, an intractable, never-ending policy mess. 
but still give some advice that represents some of the thinking around this and make sure that you know the the conversations we've had which you know and are not all thrown away and, and pointless we actually write some of it down but i mean just to repeat the idea is not to recommend anything not to specify what these code points should be used to it's simply to document how some people have interpreted the current standards and and and, and acknowledge that things may change in the future so that that's all i got for this happy to take questions victor is the goal only to capture the things that are already in use or to potentially find things that are safe to use? Because I have thoughts on the finding things that are safe to use, but if we're not looking to recommend new code points, but only capture existing dubious practices, then I don't have anything to add. Uh, so which are we trying to do? I, th I think we're trying to capture existing practices. I think we're going to avoid casting aspersions as to whether they're dubious or not. We're just going to try and relay the thinking that led to people just making those decisions, uh, whilst right. at the same time right. highlighting that these decisions are not perfect and people should right. caveat. So, so, right. right. Because in the world in of, the world you, of know, you know, ace prefixes, ace prefixes xn dash, 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 we could introduce, we could new, introduce new prefixes. prefixes. That are completely, completely collisionless, collisionless and, and, and reserved for reserved private namespace. Name and within and the within IPF's IPF purview, purview to define, to define right? Right? just like we defined like XM dash dash. I think that's right. I, I, I don't, I'm not sure what, who said what. Oh, maybe my microphone stopped working again. No, no you're 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 fine. You're fine. Okay. But there's an um, echo. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll, I'll mute when I'm not talking. But yeah, the idea is is to document what we have. Uh, there are lots of ideas, possible ideas about this. The XN dash dash type analog is one of them. SAC produced a document which which re recommended the ICANN board do a thing. The CCNSO may have opinions about things. There's all kinds of people who could have opinions around this. I think we're not trying to close any doors. We're just trying to document one set of decisions that some people have made without recommending anything. Go ahead, Wes. Yeah, sorry, yeah, I muted myself again. Go ahead, Wes. Uh, so bear with me for a minute. Um, so this is a really, really cool hack, and, and I, I loved the ingenuity of it, you know, from the beginning. Um, it, was a, it was a clever way to get out of the problem that we've been in for a while. But when I really stepped back and talked to a lot of people in the past couple of months, um, as my role in IAB and, and not, and my role as liaison a coordinator for the IAB and not, um, I realized that it's important to consider a couple of vantage points, right? So we have the advantage point from DNSOP. We've always had this issue of, you know, we want private organizations with a label or a set of labels that they can use for internal communications or, you know, whatever else. And this has been desired for a long time and we've, you know, failed to provide it. And so there's even disagreement about whether there's a need in the first place. If we consider ISO's advantage point, right, they've, they've created this space. They, they were assigned uh, the, the, uh, the responsibility of administering the two letter TLDs, you know, for user space. Um, what is a user in this context, right? In ISO's vantage point, what is a user? And, and after reading documentation and stuff, the user is supposed to be countries that don't have an assignment yet for themselves. And this is sort of important if, you know, countries split or, you know, new countries get created. It, that does still happen occasionally, and eventually they're not yet recognized, and it takes, that process takes a while. So they can take one of these user-defined spaces. If we turned around and changed the notion of what a user is from our perspective, we're adding potential conflicts to that intended use. If organizations inside a country had been using it, for example, then there amounts to similar conflicts as we already have with corp home and mail, and we know how much of a pain that whole situation is. From you know, the ISO vantage point, you know, it's functionally their code space given to them a long time ago in history that I actually don't know, which is between the IETF and ICANN and ISO that I can't summarize here because I actually don't have it in my head. But consider what it looks like if we functionally publish a document that takes it back or even publishes a document that says, you know, we don't know whether this is good or not to use. And that's really what I'm going to come down to because I, I don't think it's actually okay to even to, you know, this ends up to me being a should not or a must not. 
because uh, it's not necessarily appropriate. It's politically inappropriate to consider this. Uh, that's not where I started. I started with this as a really cool hack. Let's take one more step forward, which is the IETF vantage point, right? What happens if we set this precedence to reuse other organizations' private spaces? Would it be okay for ISO to define how private ASN spaces should be used for routing and what impact would that have on existing operations? What about another SDO that, that redefines the purpose of the evil bit? Because clearly we're never gonna use it for reals. What about an SDO that redefines the use of the Z bit in DNS because it's historic and we no longer clearly need it because we you know, aren't really using it. What about an SDO that defines how 1918 space could be used in some sort of novel way? What if ISO actually revoked you know, portions of our OID tree because they didn't think that we were using it, right? I think that we'd be furious from the IETF perspective if some organization did something similar. And in the end, to me, this is a, we, we should not do this, or we must not do this, because we have to agree between multiple standards organizations uh, to have consensus, and, and just beyond consensus, unanimous consensus in order you know for interoperability not to be broken between organizations thank you hopefully I think there seems to be a delay sometimes am i working again yes testing testing it's working now yep yep okay. brian is next. Brian is next. I, I don't know what the delay is let me just respond briefly to where's because oh, the history of the intersection between these two letter code points and how they're used as TLDs is not quite as as Wes pointed out. I mean, we we don't need to go into the history here, but it but it's it's not quite as as Wes indicated. But I want to confirm that the, su the suggested approach here is definitively not for the IETF to promote anything or to suggest that anybody do anything. Merely document that some people have used their interpretation of the standard in a particular way in their private network where they have jurisdiction how they organize their DNS. So again, it's not the IETF exerting a particular use. It's really just documenting what somebody did. I, I realize, Wes, you may well think that that's a sort of a way of a Weasley way of addressing the entire thing. But I, I do think there's some benefit in actually documenting what people are doing here. And I, I don't know where else to do it. Brian? I think everybody has ever said. Um, sorry. That's also kind of easily. I think it would be helpful or useful if we could uh, document it and then vaguely deprecate it if we have something that we can offer as an alternative. And I think if we do pick an alternative, something underneath IETF control, such as under .arpa, might be a good place for something like that. Uh, and then the question, bad ideas suggested by be previously possibly uh is having something like a an unsigned delegation to empty.as112.arpa just to make sure that if it leaks if any of these uses get leaked uh they don't really go anywhere useful anyway those are just thoughts thanks brian i i definitely appreciate the leap into engineering but i mean i think just just be 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 confident that there is no there are no shortage of ideas about how to do this from a technical perspective we're really i think at this point talking about whether we should do anything not exactly how we should do anything uh warren so warren and wearing no hats um so i think that if we were to document the fact that people do things like this we should be very careful that we do think, mention things like, you know, people do this for .home and .corp and .mail and a whole bunch of other strings that we know about. I'm concerned that if we specifically point at these ISO 3166 codes, it's going to come across as, hey, look, some set of people do this. Isn't that interesting? Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Um, and it would be very hard sort of not have that be heard as you know, we found what could be viewed as a loophole in some set of specs. That's interesting. We're not going to say use it. We're not going to say not. But hey, ain't that interesting? Um, obviously, name collisions and people squatting on names is a massive issue. And I think everybody agrees that um, having more discussion that might be useful. I'm just not sure that mentioning the set of labels is going to end well for us. Yeah, we're going to give West the last word and then take it to the list. Okay. 
But go ahead. Or Joe, you had something to say, and then Wes, and I'll I'll mute again. No, I was just going to agree with Warren. It's, it would, if we did publish something here, I mean, it's a perfectly reasonable option to say this doesn't have a home here, we should, we should drop it. And I think if that's what the working group prefers, that's what we'll do. And uh, I, mean, I, I do think if we do publish something, it's very going to be very important to make it very clear that there are problems with all these approaches. None of these things are sanctioned. The IETF is not expressing any kind of authority. All we're doing is documenting some decisions some people have made. And it has trade-offs, same, same as everything else. So I do agree. The wording will be very careful, important. Uh, so you're right that that uh, it is it, it, you would be docking documenting something that already existed. However, by actually producing the document in the first place, I actually looked went back to uh, four years worth of queries uh, on just one sample day um, out of uh, diddle data about the number of queries for .zz that arrived at uh, UC, UC, USC ISI's uh, root service. It quadrupled and almost quintupled between the point that that draft was published and now. So we already have had an effect, unfortunately. Um, but the guidance of this document that, that we might want to produce should define everything that we learned and then explain advice about why people shouldn't be doing what we've learned, right? So you're right, you know, people are doing it, but they shouldn't, and that's what we should document. Stop it. Well, I, th I think publishing it as an idea considered harmful is, is certainly an idea too. So I guess we'll take it to the list and uh, thanks Suzanne. And, uh, Next, next thing, I guess. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Joe. And yep. I think the 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 next the next item is the the last thing, and it's it's um we had gone to the working group a couple of weeks ago, and we're we're are uh, trying to get a handle on priorities among the working working group's workload, and Tim is going to lead that. So go ahead, Tim. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Um. Yeah. Um, and thanks for Benno for putting some of these together. These are very good. Um, going through the list of documents we have, um, when this first came up, I, I was sort of like, I didn't think we had that many documents. And then I looked and I said, oh, maybe we do. And then I looked and I realized like, oh, HTTP biz has just as many as we do. So we're not as horrible as like the next group of people. Um, I don't know if that means anything. But in the data tracker, as you can see, we've got 17 documents, really 12 when you sort of toss out the ones that are basically in the process or being held. Um, I think the held one is the alt TLD document, which we won't talk about right now. Um, so in an idea to sort of manage, prioritize what's going on, we were looking at some documents that are close or ready to working group last call, you know, basically the low hanging fruit. And then what does the working group think about this? And we, when we were talking about this with Warren, we sort of threw out this half-baked idea of like, you, maybe we should do a poll and worms like that's a great idea you should do a poll and um and so there we are um so look for all the other warren group um working groups that have polls that got going out as well um we'll see um so looking at some of this this is some of the um where we sort of saw some of the you know feedback from folks where where there was some as we sort of said on monday was that Monday when we had our first meet? Oh, yes, it was. Um, some, you know, a lot of positive stuff on the NSEC3 guidance draft. The glue is not optional. NS3 validation. Um, some interesting, you know, pushback on um, well, a lot of indifference to stuff like uh, 5933 biz and the IN consideration catalog zones. Um, as, comments like that. Um, not important. Um, delegation only sort of got the, the the largest negative response. Um, sorry, Paul, um, the other Paul, not that Paul, that Paul, um, you know which Paul it is. Um, but yeah, that seems to be really where the working group was sort of, it was sort of good to get sort of this feedback in a very anonymous way. So people didn't feel like they were gonna be judged any way, shape or form. Um, would you like to say something, Mr. Paul? They also probably revealed that on my um, um, my submission too. Um, the questions are a little weird. Like like the, the the delegation only draft, for instance, just takes fifteen minutes for people to finally decide to kill this idea or accept this idea. Like yep. it doesn't take yep. much working group time. Exactly. Exactly. And, exactly. And so telling people whether it's important or not, that I'm putting it to the back of the list all the time, is what has already been done to this document for like two years. So I I don't think the the methods of 
trying to clear our queue is is a proper method because there will always become more important things than the less important items we have and so you will always get them on the end of the chain and they will just linger for years without getting resolvement either one way or the other and that's the real problem to solve. That, that no actually that's a very good point and and i think some of what we're going to take from some of this is not just things to move forward but things to to basically say goodbye to right um and and you're absolutely correct. Um, that that's a good way to say it. And um, and yes, it won't take that long. Okay, Warren, you may. Thank you. And yeah, I mean, I think some of this is also people who've said that a specific document is important. I think we're hoping that that also means, and they're willing to spend some time on reviewing it really soon and providing comments as well. Right. So some of this isn't just which is important, but it's also a implicit and I'm willing to actually spend the time to do a useful review as soon as it comes up for working group last call. Um, another part was also to help get people thinking about the set of drafts for the conversation. But I don't really know why I'm talking now, so I'll just stop. Okay. Thank you. Um, and much like we discussed on Monday, we feel we have a, a few graphs that are pretty close to working group last call. Um, I the I had a consideration it, this is this is not interesting, but it's basically plumbing that we have to do that I feel we have to do as a working group. And I think the chair is all sort of in agreement on that. And so we'll move that forward. I a lot of good discussion on the glue is on optional now that it's been revived and um, as well as the avoid fragmentation. We really want to sort of move that along, um, though there was some good discussion on, on Monday about some of that. Um, I need to sort of we need to follow up on. Same thing with NSEC three guidance. We're very, you know, it it looks like some straightforward measurements to get to settle on some max iteration count, and um, we feel that the, the the draft is ready to go to move forward as well, um, as long as the authors sort of feel similarly, um, which we think they do. So there's a few things that sort of came up. Um, that reconsider are pretty close as well. The error reporting um, needs a little bit more discussion um, and some sort of this, you know, some prototypes. But NS free validation, we feel, um, and I know I've sort of poked the authors on this a few times. Um, we really think it's pretty, pretty close to working group last call. Okay, Schumann, as one of the authors. Uh, yeah, so I was going to say um, it's mostly done. There are a few uh, small edits that were in the queue. So what happened with that was we kind of got derailed a bit and lost momentum when uh, one of our co-authors, Ralph Delmans, left for uh, green yeah. pasture, by which I mean non-DNS pastures. He completely left the DNS protocol engineer community. So um, we're, we're going to pick that up. I just have to um, uh, ping uh, Paul, that is Paul Vixie, and uh, yeah. finish up some of those edits. And then hopefully we can get that reviewed. Yes. I, I did not poke you this time because you had been you guys had been working you folks have been working on the the glue is not optional draft and um i didn't want to sort of get you mixed up with that so but thank you okay yeah thanks yeah victor timing on the nsec3 in terms of timing on the nsec3 recommendations i'm waiting for a few shoes to drop trans it has some bulk changes that they're implementing and a few others and we'll have a much clearer picture of what the deployment landscape looks like about a month or two out. So I don't know if that's, you know, within the kind of time frame you're thinking ready yeah. for group uh, call or not. But I think that's, that's close. close. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But not today. I, I, you know, I think we're, uh, you but know. before but before the next IETF, we should be able to Yes. Put, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Things should be clearer by then, yes. Yep. Perfect. That's exactly how I sort of view close. Um really close would be you know, like I had in consideration, that'll probably go off this week um, as, as soon as I sort of get moving on stuff. Um, some other interest, you, you know, there's sort of mixed interest in some of these. Um, we do want to move the 8499 biz because there's some updates in that, um, some some new terminology, especially around the DOT, DOH bits, um, and maybe some more after the deprived discussion on some of the DNS over quick and some of the variations. I, I will have to talk to the authors on that. Um, but some of the new work being suggested in the 
in sort of the free form field, the DNSSEC bootstrapping, um, which we saw, you know, as well as the DNSSEC automation, um, we saw that, you know, we saw both drafts kind of come through the mailing list and they looked interesting. Um, and we were sort of, you know, we're thinking that, yes, these may, you know, these sort of fall into the sort of same bits um, that we feel very good about sort of adopting, but we held off because of, you know, we wanted to make sure we sort of got our handle on what we were doing. Um, but, and I think the DNSSEC bootstrapping, it got a fair bit of good comments uh, about sort of being adopted. So I think that's something the authors, we should talk to the authors about um, sort of bringing up discussion on the mailing list as well. Um, so thanks for that. As you know, we've held our TLD and that's not going to go um, anywhere. Um, and we've sort of held back on sort of, you know, we, we had we had folks present stuff that wasn't what we considered current business or even new business because we like doing that in DNSOP. We like giving folks sort of that place to sort of, you know, throw out all their sort of ideas and sort of get the feedback. Um, it didn't mean we were going to adopt stuff or sort of put it in the queue. Um, but, you know, we want to get the queue a little bit more cleaned up or a little more organized. So, uh, Paul? Explain why Alt-TLD is going nowhere. It was held by the working group. There's, you know, in the last draft, we saw a lot of interest. Why is it going nowhere? I'm going to let Suzanne talk about that because I'm no expert on the Alt-TLD bit. Sorry, Suzanne. Um, yeah, not um, there's not a lot to say. We had parked it pending. Man, I'd have to look at. I, I would. I would actually have to go look at it here. Yeah, Warren probably remembers better than I do. But we had held it pending resolution of some some external condition. And Warren, if you if you remember, you should speak up. I believe that we held it based on the finishing the special use domain names problem statement document and then an assumption that after we finished special use names problem statement, we would actually get around to fixing all the problems with special use domain names. Um, it was always the plan that, you know, there would be the problem statement document yeah, and then the resolution document. And I think we have never actually found people with enough stomach to take on the solution to special use names um, registries. Yeah, there was some hope that we would come up with a more general framework for moving. At the time, we had a large number of requests for special use names, and there was... Uh, I mean, I, I'll point out that I am an author, and I still think it's a really great idea. We could always say, you know, it's unlikely that we will ever solve the problem of special use names, so let's possibly go ahead with this but I'm biased, obviously, and that's the chair's decision. Um, I will mention it did have a working group last call to which we invited ICANN people who all came along and I think were probably terrified by us, but they nodded sagely. Yeah. Go ahead, Paul. Don't say things like that. Um, I, I know you were sort of joking, but that's not at all a good, a good representation of what happened. Um, ICANN folks came and said, you know what, if the IETF wants something, we'll make it happen. That's really different. You're right. I was overly flippant, as, as I am wont to do. Apologies. Yep. Yep. Thanks. Well, um, a good comment came out of the, the the chat was basically we should go talk to a lot of the authors and figure out what's going on with stuff. Um, which yes, we do. We tend to do that. Um, you before an ITF, we usually start contacting all the authors of documents and poking them about the status and where they are, um, and where we think you know where we think things should be. And a lot of that we do you know sort of in the background, and so maybe it's not as transparent. And one thing that I've been really thinking about a lot, and I think Benno and Suzanne have been, is trying to figure out how to be more transparent to the working group as to how we make our decisions and basically our, our sort of workflow. Um, because we do think about this stuff. We have a bi-weekly chairs call um, where we sort of go over a bunch of this and try to, figure, try to prioritize what we think is happening. Um, 
and we do it basically a little independently of the working group, which I think now that I realize is perhaps not the best way to do it. Um, and so um, it'd be great to get some solid feedback. You know, we're getting some solid feedback from the from the poll and from folks. Um, and yes, we want to sort of put, we don't, you know, we want to basically start moving more stuff along and or not moving stuff along in, in, in Mr. Waters case. And, and he's absolutely correct in some of this. Um, I think sometimes we push stuff down thinking that eventually it'll go away. But really, the answer is we need to, you know, make those decisions in the working group. And we're just the chairs are, you know, I'm just as guilty of, of, of letting those slide and um, thinking about the bigger issues on, on moving stuff forward. Um, so, oh, Brian, you want to say something? I think there is interest. Um, could we do a show of hands? Is that something we can do in this format? A show of hands for I missed what the first part of the hand. Okay, uh, chairs, uh, how do you feel about doing a show of hands? And if so, uh, let's do a show of hands. I'm sorry, a show of hands on what? I guess that was the question. Getting it back out of the health and making it move forward. So yeah, sorry, I'm 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 missing part part of it that dropped. Uh, um, Benno, Suzanne, any suggestion? I'm missing something there. I don't know. No, it's, it's not no. Brian's audio is not great, so I'm not sure what he was requesting a show of hands on. Um, in any case, we are running a little bit short on time. Um, oh. And oh, the request. Is oh, sorry. Uh, the request is whether all TLD should move forward now. That. Um, um, since it's been parked for a while and it's not clear that people have had much of a chance to renew their memories on it, I think it would be better to take that to the list, tell people we're interested in assessing that, and give them a chance to reread it. Yeah. Yeah. So this session is really about. <laughs> making progress in general and not about specific uh, uh, drafts. Uh, so it's more approach how to improve, well, progress and, and manage workload. And, and transparency and, in, in our workflow, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and indeed, uh, all the individual drafts have to be discussed. Uh, maybe, uh, as, as, as Schumann mentioned, some authors have, uh, have a new career and outside the DNS. So maybe some of these documents need an additional new author, this kind of things. And, the, and the, the chairs will think about it and get in dialogue with the authors if either they need, they, there's another author needed on a document, what's necessary. And also for the alt TLD, we need to think about uh, what to do. Is that, do we need to go to the mailing list or talk with the authors? Uh, Indeed, uh, well, we had just had a disc discussion. Uh, what's blocking the document and how we can uh, get around that. And one thing we sort of thought about was having a meeting every so often in between IETFs where we, you know, authors come in or anybody can come in and sort of, you know, we talk about sort of document status and, and mostly, you know, how to move things forward, not so much discussing the the innards of documents, but, you know, where are we, how are we moving, you know, how are we doing, that kind of thing. We're, we're always looking for sort of feedback on how to improve our process, basically. Because we do get a lot of folks kind of coming in with stuff, and we see a lot of documents. And there's some, like the bootstrapping document, which we think is very interesting, but um, sort of got sh missed in the shuffle um, that I think, you know, really sort of fit into the, the DNSOP world. 
Uh, so we're always looking for that. And, and I, I hope we're, we're responsive to any, any issues or, you know, people, people want to raise. And, you know, you just go talk to Warren if you've got issues. Um, he's very willing to listen and, and bring things to us and, and sort of yell at us about stuff. I think he, he well, should feel free to yell at us first. Yes. You know. And in general, I did want to say, um, I suggested in the chat, just asking people if um, it seemed useful to them for us to do like what the IAB and I think the IASG have been doing the last couple of years, where instead of having an, a, an agenda item for a, a lengthy or detailed report, we publish a status report to the list a week before a meeting, and then we have time for questions or comments. Yes, on I that think report. That would be, we don't have to go through would, it. We just have we just have time in the meeting for for people to to uh, bring up specific um, items, yep. and well, that seemed to get some good reactions. So, okay. guys, we you know we should think about that. I think it would be a good idea. Yes, agreed. Go ahead, Paul. So one suggestion I have is to maybe monthly or so just send an email with the list of items that we are working on, items that we need feedback on, so that everybody is reminded very regularly about what items we are talking about. And then we have a much better situation where we can declare lack of interest uh, and other things to, 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 to then kill those documents that have no interest or say this document seems to never be able to reach consensus, we're killing it there for then, then we have something. Uh, I think the the three times a year list of documents is just not good enough to get through this. No, I agree. No, I, and actually, that's funny because we keep a document status list in GitHub. And I've always thought about mailing it out regularly. And it's kind of where we think documents are. You know, it's like this is being, you know, we're waiting for an author to get back to us on something. And so you're you're right. We, we actually keep something very similar to that already. We should push that to the mailing list on a regular basis. That... That's a very good point, and actually, I, I would agree totally with that. So, okay, so we should take that as a as an action item as well. Um, no, thank you for that. Yeah, we are almost out of time, but um, this this has been tremendously useful. Thanks, everybody, yep. um, and we have time for one or two final comments if anybody has anything additional to say. Yep. Let's speak up. Or we can give you back three three minutes of your afternoon evening. And Brian, go ahead. Brian? Okay, sorry. I hate to be that guy. Uh, at Deprive, um, there was some stuff I was suggesting that I wanted to bring over to DNSOP, um, specifically to deal with uh, the, the fact that um, delegations are unsigned. Um, and I was wondering, is that, should I just write that up and post it to the list and ask yes. uh, for feedback? Okay. Yes. Yep. Okay. Just want to make sure it was cool. Thanks. All right. Oh, it looks like Ben's going to get the last word in. Okay. Oh, so Schwartz. on that topic, uh, I would I would appreciate from the chairs um, a little more guidance about where documents like that should go um, between DNS yep. and op and, and deprive. Basically, if DNS op is overloaded, you know, tell us so we can have that conversation in deprive. Yep, we can do that. Warren, and I'll talk really quickly, kind of like an echo. Um, we had spoken about having a joint meeting between Deprive and DNSOP and ADD and a bunch of others where specifically we could talk about that sort of stuff. We should probably try and organize that in interim. Yes. Kind of a joint um, interim. Yep. Cool. All right. Then I'm going to let go because Mr. Michelson wants his minutes back. Um, but no, but thank you all for showing up. Especially so. those of you who are up in the middle of the night. It is vastly, yeah. vastly appreciated. Yes, we do appreciate that. And so. we'll be. With that, we'll say good night or good day. And 
see you on the list. And thanks again for the input. Yes. Good night, everyone.